dad employed many men from Beach, all in that neighborhood, to come up there. And he gave them a living during the Depression, which was really good because they helped him build camp, and he helped them at a bad time when it was hard for them to get a job. Sam Hyder was the gardener, I remember him. He lived in our house during the week, and his home was down at Beach, but he would go down there on the weekends, but he lived in our home during the week. And he was in charge of taking care of the house up near the lake that had batteries in it that made our electricity. So I guess we had a generator up there that, that gave us electricity until we could get it from the county. That was before the war because I can remember going in that little house and seeing it and then and then it, later it was torn down. I'm sure it was torn down after we got electricity. And um, I can remember they had me um, hold a bottle of champagne or whatever it was. It probably wasn't champagne, it was probably grape juice. But anyway, I had to let it hit the house when they christened the Hoffman cabin. And I was probably about, um, about 10 years old when that happened. And they named the Hoffman cabin after Uncle Mike. And he was one of the early people helping dad run the camp. And he became a famous character there that everybody loved and knew. And he was in charge of the Indian program and the nature program. And um, that was before we even had a nature den. He had a little place underneath the craft shop where he had his nature study. Then we got the nature den. That was, a, I'd call it Scottish family, mountain family, up uh, McDerry's Cove, which was halfway between camp and the beach store. There's a little Baptist church, and there's a road that went right by that little Baptist church back up into that mountain cove, and they lived up there. So I guess Dad bought the cabin from up there. And then um, I enjoyed C.S. Sherwood. He was a famous storyteller. Now, I've may named some people you don't know. Uh, you may not know C.S. Sherwood, but he was one of the main characters. He was famous for telling stories and teaching astronomy, too. I felt lucky they paid a lot of attention to me as a little girl because I was the only girl there. And and so they were so good to me. Pop came to camp when he was 17 and he was a bugler. And he kind of, he, he took to me a little bit, you know. He carried me piggyback and, and played with me and things like that. And then we just kind of grew up together. And then he got to be better and better on the staff as he got older and had more responsibility. But um, I'd just like to say he Pop became a real close friend of mine. And I enjoyed him a whole lot. We would be involved in some of the celebrations together. And one story that I enjoyed hearing tell about was Harold when he was a little boy had two cats. One was named Tonsillitis and one was named Adenoids. And Tonsillitis got, got killed by a wildcat. The wildcat, think, they think, the wildcat came down off of the mountain behind the infirmary and down into that area near the camp kitchen. And they saw the footprints of the wildcat and assumed that that had killed the cat. Yes, he was a camper. In fact, he was in Pop's cabin uh, one year. He would go up there and be a camper in the cabin. Um, I think probably three or four years when he was real young. And I can remember back in those early days, they took boys to Paula's Island 
to to camp to be at the beach for a while and he went to the beach with a with a camp group and caught malaria and he had to take medicine for malaria for a long time and uh, I remember another thing is that he left his tennis shoes on the beach and the waves came up and washed him in the ocean and I think they had to go somewhere and buy him some more shoes because he only had one pair of shoes. Harold uh, participated by running the camp store. He he uh, had a little a little store built for him near where Nasitawa is, and before that, the camp store was at the office where there was a dog trot in the office between my grandmother's room and and the main office there was an open space there and that's where the the mailboxes were for people to get mail and and they sold back when this was in the 30s sold candy and chewing gum i think or at least candy in that area and that was before my brother got involved but later they built a special place for him to have the camp store and and so he ran that and he also had to cut grass i remember seeing him cut the lawn between the dining room and the house a lot that was a big lawn and he pushed the lawn more but i don't think he participated in the activities of the camp, I, he was always making model airplanes and staying by himself and making things like that. He made a car when he was 14 that really drove. The whole body and everything was a big, big long car and he'd gotten an engine from a motorcycle and he built the frame and with, put the wheels on it and everything it was it would run. And I worked in the craft shop and I spent a lot of time up there as I was growing up because I loved crafts. I was in charge of uh, the craft shop at the junior camp and I, when the junior camp kind of first started and then I was in charge of the senior camp my later years just before I got married. He went when he was 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, Eustace was in a cabin right next to the craft shop, and he he happened to wake up during the night and see. He was the first one to see that the craft shop was burning. I guess he said that it was either a bright light or heat or something that he could that woke him up. And so then he he got the news to Bruce Caps and Bruce Caps um, called the fire truck to come and got all the campers out of the camp to go down to the dining room and and stay down there until they were sure everybody was safe because the cabins could have caught on fire around the craft shop yeah, and it could have spread, you know. Yeah, that was that was not the last year Eustace was there, but about the second year he was there. And the reason the crash shop caught on fire is because they had um, the kill going for the pottery, and apparently it got too hot underneath where it was sitting or something close to it, and was not safe, and caught the craft shop on fire. And it specialized in woodcraft and the Indian ore, which other camps didn't have. But we had a good staff and, and it was just a good spirit about the camp that I think a lot of people appreciated and meant a lot to them. It was kind of better than a lot of other camps and and i guess you could say because of the staff that dad got there like you said he knew how to pick out good people 
and and there were certain people there that had been there for years and years and years that old campers would love to come back and see and remember. And Dad um, kept in touch. My mother said he was nothing but a letter writer. He wrote letters to everybody for so so many years all the time. Um, he loved to keep in touch with the campers and the staff. You know, if Dad came back now, he'd be shocked at the way the world is. Because when he was there, he made every counselor get a haircut. Boy, he'd have a hard time now getting everybody to get a haircut. I can't even get my boys to get a haircut. 